Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today I want to talk about the separation of data and logic in your code. So a lot of the time you'll see a game set up with the logic and the data kind of on the same class. You'll see a player that has maybe some health on them and some mana or some other stats or variables on them. And then as the player goes through the world, you'll see that variable on that player script decrement. You know, maybe it's the health. They took damage. Health went down by one, right? And that's a pretty common way to do things. It's fast, it's easy to set up, and it works for sure. But it's not really scalable when you get to bigger games where you really need to persist your data. So if you've got like a online game where your characters are getting saved off, um, it gets a bit harder when you start to mix these things. Also, if you're working on multiplayer games, sending that data around just becomes a, a bit more work because you have to kind of figure out what data there is figure out what you're going to send and then serialize all that and send it across back and forth. And, and it gets kind of hard to recreate these objects or you know, do like JSON serialization of them if you want to. So what I like to do now is just split this stuff out so that the data classes are just regular plain old CLR objects with no, not mono behaviors or anything else. And then just use those on my actual mono behaviors. So here I've got a little demo set up with a player and he's got a single script on him called player. Now you notice that you can't see these other stats on him and that's just because I didn't put in the extra 10 minutes to make some editor scripts and make this stuff all visible. But I want to just go over the basics real quick with you. So I've got a player here. He's got a player data script on him or you know it's just a C sharp class. Uh, in awake we fill that player data by calling our player persistence dot get data method. And on destroy we save that data back out. So right here you can see already that saving and loading my character is pretty simple. Like I don't have to have much logic in the player. I just have to tell the persistence class to do the saving, right? There's no big save or load method in here. Um, and then in update, you'll see that we just log the current health of the player data. We'll go look at that in just a second. And then if we left click, we reduce the health by one. If we right click, we actually set the player data to a new player data. So this is just a simple way to reset this for this demo. And then the modify health, of course, just reduces the health by the amount or it modifies it by the amount. Here it's negative one, so we're subtracting one. So let's take a look at the player data class. And here it is, you see that we just have three integers pretty simple right and now this another benefit to this is that we can also use this in external tools stuff so one of the projects I'm working on we have um, a, a lot of data that needs to be edited outside of unity just going into a big database and having a class like this that I can pull into another regular C sharp project or a web project is pretty helpful because now I can you know modify or view player data view player persistence data and if this were other content data I could do the same. So let's jump back over to the editor hit play and just see how this works and then uh, I'm just going to talk about it a little bit more. So here you'll see that oh, we're logging a health of 96. It's actually because I haven't reset since the last time. So I'm going to right click and you see health is back to 100. I'll clear out my login as I click you see health goes down and if I right click again you'll see that if you look right here 100 is the one that's showing again. So health's back up to 100. Now I'm going to drop it down again to whatever 93, stop, and start again. And you'll see that we just resume at 93. And again, the point here is that saving off this data or transferring this data is a whole lot easier, right? Like I could have a nice big player class that has a decent amount of stuff. And when I say big, I mean maybe a couple hundred lines. We don't want to get enormous and crazy. But, um, our player data is totally independent and it's easy to figure out what data we have available. It's easy to send this stuff across the network. It's easy to persist it. And you know, when we're doing the persistence, let's take a look at that. So on destroy, we actually save the data. Now in this setup, I'm just using player prefs, but we could be using a SQL server, some NoSQL solution, uh, flat files. We could JSON serialize it. However you want to save it off, because it's just a regular old class, it's pretty simple to serialize that thing and save it wherever you want, however you want. In this case, like I said, using player prefs because it's a nice, simple example that anybody can use and everybody should kind of understand. Um, and then let's take a look at the load. So when we load it, again, we just pull it from player prefs and we turn return back out this new player data. Now, another thing that we can use this for is passing data around 
between our classes. So if I have an enemy that needs to figure something out based off of a player, I don't need to pass in the entire player object. I can just pass in this player data. So maybe I've got an enemy that wants to find the player with the lowest health. I can pass in these player data objects and have it look at that, not have to worry about no references on the player if the player you know, disconnects, goes out of scope, or something else happens. Um, we just have this, like I said, simple class, easy to find. Now there are a lot of other examples for this. Um, I've been using it a lot in a new big ability system for an MMO and uh, item systems, stuff like that. There, there are quite a few different situations where this is super useful, but I still think it's good enough and important enough to separate these things out that it, it's something you could use in just about any kind of project. Again, if you're doing something super simple, you're making a, a little Flappy Bird clone, maybe this is overkill. If you're not doing any persistence, you're not doing any um, networking, just again, maybe a little bit of overkill, but there's really no um, no harm to it. There's no, you're not losing anything by separating your data out other than that little inspector work right there, but we don't really want to see this stuff in here anyway when we're editing the player. We should have that on a separate script, maybe a scriptable object or another component there. Anyway, um, I know this isn't super specific. Like I said, I, I couldn't really get into the details of real world situations that I'm using this in just because of NDAs and other things like that. Um, but I think that the concept still kind of applies across the board. Ideally, if you can separate out your data and your logic, just pass your data into different classes that handle the logic, you'll be happier, your code will be cleaner, and it's a lot easier to build things, extend things, and persist. And of course, if you want to later on make the switch to multiplayer from a single player game, this will make it a whole lot easier. So I hope this is a little bit helpful. If you liked the video, don't forget to share, thumbs up, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.